there's never been a better time to have Sirius XM. With even more exclusive content, with over 150 channels in your vehicle, including the widest, deepest variety of music, ad-free. Root for your team. Get news. Listen to whatever makes you laugh. And hear all about your favorite stars. Your Platinum Plan offer includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free, personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels filled with music and enjoy a favorite shows with Sirius XM Video. Thousands of hours of shows and performances on demand. What you love is on now. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Ben Wu coming to you live from Mesa, Arizona for day three, the final day here at Master Tech Expo. Of course, if we're going to do the last day, I've got to have my man here, Brian Smith. Brian, and bro, like you have been 10,000 miles a minute since I arrived in Phoenix. We're here on day three. First of all, how are you feeling this morning? Oh, Ben, awesome. You feel good, right? Yeah, I feel great. You know, we've had some pretty monumental things happen. Uh, everything from the mayor, Fireworks, uh, chip foos, build off, amazing training classes. It has been a whirlwind. I'll tell you, if you've been following the social media on Master Tech Expo, we've been trying to give you tidbits of what you've been missing. I'm going to break this interview real quick. I know you got a lot to do, but there's three things yeah. I want to get from you this morning. Okay. Number one, from the point this started, I had you on here on day one. Here we are on day three. Reflect for me a little bit everything that you've seen unfold as these last three days have gone by. It has been a whirlwind. It's, it's just a, a lot of energy. A lot of things have uh, just uh, happened over these this, this three days. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of hard to, you know, explain the energy. The energy and the vibe is so oh, cool. I think and you nailed it with that word, vibe. It's a, it's a, it's a mm -hmm. cool vibe. And, uh, you know, the, the venue here is just different. The atmosphere is small. And everybody here is serious. You know, this is where the pros come. This is where the best of the best in the world come to collaborate, to network, to share ideas, and to go to that next level. Uh, I, I'll make two comments, and this is what I want you to hear. I want you guys at home to hear. Being around you guys, obviously, last two, three years, I show up at 8 a.m. Bro, I'm the last one here because everybody's already got their coffee. They've got their minute. They are here, serious, ready to learn. And that, that is a testament to the quality of the education that they're getting here. It is. It's commitment. I mean, when you see those classes full, full. at 8 o'clock in the morning, that's telling you something. Yeah, that actually makes sleep. Yeah, pretty Maybe much. For a pretty minute. Much. <laughs> but uh, they're here to learn. Absolutely. You know, again, that's where the pros come is here. And, and we do take it serious because we value our craft is the best. And, and the quality, guys, I sat in on so many sessions. Unfortunately, I don't get to sit like you guys, the, the whole thing. I want to hop around and get, a, you know, taste test everything. And the... The trainers have brought their A game. Like their presentations are so deep, oh. so well planned, precise, and deep. You know, they're not reading off the box, is what I want to say. Oh yeah, you know, some of the comments I've heard is, this show is it's just focused. Mm -hmm. It's super focused on the tech, the technology. You know, the things that matter, the things that kind of move the needle. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Now yeah. let's talk about features and excitement. So as a spectator here, you're going to see a lot of things. You promised a lot of things, Brian. I did. You freaking promised a lot of things. You guys know this. So I'm the first one to tell you officially that Brian has literally delivered on everything we saw on the flyer. So I'm going to take them for a quick tour. Yeah. Trainings. We talked about that. Yeah. Whether it was depending on the lane you chose or, the, you know, the classes you took, they were awesome. Um, even the, the vendor trainings were really good. Like these guys put up their oh, effort. Okay, the so vendors the are training, outstanding. If you haven't figured out by now that, you, you know, training is priority number one here, you've been under a rock. That's number one. Number two. The exhibit show floor, all the booths, it's not like any show you've ever been to because they're not here about the glitz and the glam, the LED lights and the trussing structures. They are showing you technology in their booths, guys, like stuff that makes it tick. And that's the kind of conversations they're having. When I see CNC machines, laser machines, guys sewing leather upholstery live on the floor, like that's what makes this show different. The challenges, the build-off challenge, mm. the clean wire challenge is blowing my mind. And like it took me an hour to figure out who I want to vote for. 
an hour of my time. My tacos got cold. By the way, the food is incredible. My tacos <laughs> got cold because I hear him contemplating what I want to vote for. But just to show you that I think what you've done is you've created an experience that is unique, that is certainly beneficial to the betterment of everybody's trade, everybody's skill set. Yeah. But also, man, it's a great network working opportunity dude last night i was in the hotel lobby i didn't move from my chair for four and a half hours at one point i had everybody from bell shafe pate um miller like literally everybody within arm's reach just still talking shop right into the mic uh, that's, awesome. that's what it's about yeah i mean it's infectious right? that's it. it's infectious all right yeah. so we talked about you talking up your big game you've come here you've delivered so I'm going to ask the question that everybody wants to ask you, but probably too nervous to ask you because you look so tired. <laughs> What's in store moving forward? Well, we want to do more of the same. I think our recipe works. We're definitely going to refine it, and we always want to be better and improve at what happens. Who knows what's going to happen for next year for our keynotes. You know, I By the way, something's going on today. I should mention, we have a keynote with Aaron Demers that's happening later on today. Actually, that happened yesterday. That happened. I'm sorry. We're yes. day three. That happened yesterday. But it we also have, yesterday. we're announcing the winners for the challenges today. That's all the I'm challenges. The build off. Right. That's today. the clean wire challenge and the, and the light off. There yeah. you go. There yeah, you go. All, okay. and, and also our security challenge is going to be up on stage as well. Friends from Viper and Vox. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Yes. So going back to picking your brain. Right now, sitting right here, you're sitting in the final day of the 2023 yes. show. What are you thinking, looking for? Uh, you know, I think it's going to be better. It's similar, just more refined. And we want to have that excitement and the next level. Whatever is trending, what's coming next, we're going to have it here. We're going to be teaching that. We're going to be showing that. And we're going to be on that cutting edge of the curve. That You know, what's next, that's what we have. Me sitting here right now. I have no suggestions for you. I'm going to need some time to process this week. <laughs> but I'll come back to you. Brian, I'm going to let you go. Thank hey, you so much, man. Anybody you, you want to thank, here's your opportunity. Hey, we want to thank everybody who's helped support us and who's here. And if you could make it this year, man, come next year. It's something you do not want to miss. So you guys take care. We'll see you, next, we'll see you soon. All right. Take care, Brian. Good see luck. You. We're going to go ahead and process this information, give Brian a chance to kind of group you know, gather his thoughts. We're definitely going to circle back with Brian and see what he has in store moving forward for 2024 and beyond. Now, I've got a great roster of um, different brands, different representatives of each brand that are going to come on. Um, again, we're trying to give you tidbits of what you're missing here. Some of the key messages that are being, um, you know, communicated here at the show, starting with my first guest. Come on in, sir. He's been on before. He's the boss man over at JVC Kenwood. Mr. Scott Coswell, welcome again to the show. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. It is hot outside and sunny. It's been three very busy, busy days. Yep. And you guys came here in a big way. So I want to give you an opportunity to kind of explain to the what they're missing from a footprint. Like what do you have physically here as an experience okay. for JVC sure. and Kenwood? Yeah, we have, um, we're actually exhibiting outside this year where we were kind of like inside outside last year. Um, we brought a 20 by 25 foot blow up tent, which is kind of cool. Unique. Um, I think you're the only one with that kind of setup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. It's kind of neat. I have had a lot of people come by and ask me where we got it. So um, we've got that. We've got uh, our new displays that we had at Knowledge Fest mm -hmm. here. And we also have our new motorcycle audio along with the motorcycle uh, that we yes, got. Yes. Here. So this is this is going to be a running theme for a couple months, I think, because everybody's talking about it. So so two footprints. you got a little JVC space. you got some Kenwood space going on. Yep. And obviously, the talk of the town right now is, wow, a source unit company that's now taken on a very particular segment. Yes. In motorcycle audio, we had a little bit of a chance to talk about it last show. I want to go dive a little bit deeper. Sure, yeah, what, be great. What was the driving force behind? Was it dealers coming to you say, "Hey, man, we love you guys, but I really wish you did this"? Or what was the driving force behind going down that path? You know, you know, it wasn't probably so much dealer driven because I mean, there, there's there's demand out there, but we just looked at the market and found that okay, so this is this is really something that's grown a lot in the past few years, and. Is there a place for us? And if there is, where should we be? And I think uh, based on the feedback from the dealers that we've spoken to at the show and even at Knowledge Fest, we, we slotted in exactly where we need to be. Our price points are good. We come in a little bit less than some of our competitors. So it gives them kind of a, an opportunity to do a better, best kind of steps up. Mm -hmm. um, and they have some unique features to them that are not found on other... Can, can you so, speak to that a little bit? Well, I mean, for one thing... Um, the motorcycle amplifiers that we have are designed specifically for Harley. 
they are not to be used in any so other So this is not the same amplifier in the power, power sports? Right, or more right. And that's pretty much what everybody does. So they all have a power sports amp, and there's nothing wrong with that. They've, they've got an amplifier, but it was never made for Harley-Davidson. So our amplifiers are designed specifically for the Harley-Davidson. And that, what, what that allows us to do is allows us to have amplifiers that already uh, are built to take in, um, get rid of the the big bass boost that's in mm -hmm. the back of the radio. So you don't need to flash the radio. Oh, right. So, so that's built, that feature is built into the amplifier. Into the amplifier. Okay. So, so there's, it takes one step out that they don't have to do. Um, another kind of unique feature is um, the power management of the amplifier on a Harley. Because Harleys don't have alternators. They have no, stators. Right. They have very, very primitive, and very pretty small, small batteries. Yeah, and small charging systems. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people kind of, you know, load these things up. And they, I mean, a Harley just stock has enough voltage to run the bike and maybe a little more but not much more than that so what happens is if you overtax that stator after a while you burn it out and they're very expensive to replace right. so what our amplifiers do is they, they actually do a better what job with current draw they're about half the current draw most amplifiers so there's built-in power management technology well it's just that they take into consideration the current fair enough you know so they're efficient environment that can be very efficient there you go uh, and they also have a, a voltage sensing feature so that if you're out there running your bike for a while, and you, like you said, they have small batteries, and you kill the battery, mm -hmm. usually you're just trying to jumpstart an 800-pound motorcycle. Yeah, not the easiest so, task. Yeah, so this allows, uh, what it'll do is if it drops below a certain voltage, it'll just shut off the system. And that way, it leaves you enough voltage to start the bike. Right, because that's a little bit of a priority over the sound in, in, in that situation. For most people. <laughs> for most people, that's right. Yes. Now, I've had a chance to kind of talk to some people since its launch a couple of weeks ago. Yep. And here's some of the feedback. So what people really appreciate about it is the fact that it's a more, for, for those that are brand eccentric that really believe and sell that Kenwood brand, they have more to add to that catalog now for those customers that they built that loyalty for your brand, right? Yes. So that's number yep. one. But there also comes an expectation. And I mean that in two different respects. Uh, the first expectation is fit and finish. Yep. So when a brand like Kenwood applies themselves, we know the fit and finish has to be there. It's spot it's on. Zero compromise. Yep. So is it there? Are you satisfied with the fit and finish oh, of yeah, that motorcycle yeah, range? Yeah, they did a really good job. And the cut-in kits, for instance, um, have some unique features too. So I mean like the cut-ins for the six by nines that go in the wrist saddlebags. Um, first of all, they mount, they mount the, the six by nine so that they're pointed at the rider. Mm. And, and Not inward. straight up in the air. Well, most of them point kind of outward. Fair enough, yes. So this is pointed towards the rider. Uh, also has really good water management. You can pour water on them; it'll drain out the, the side. Won't go in the, the, the saddlebag. It'll drain out at the base of the uh, the grill, and the grills fit really well. And what the grills do is uh, they have a really nice cut-in uh, template mm -hmm. that sits on it, and it sits on it, and it goes over the lip of the right. saddlebag so that you can't misplace it. Right, so it's foolproof as far as yeah, placing well, the template. And if you think you got maybe someone that's new to putting speakers in a mm -hmm. saddlebag then you know that they're going to be able to do it you know not not worry about shifting it or something so the, the cuts in the right place every time my, my the last part of that feedback was yeah. a, an expectation um that they should be efficient that they don't need ridiculous amounts of power to perform how do you feel yep. about this thing? no it's true it's true and these amplifiers um they're all two channel amplifiers okay so they're they're 80 times two and they're super efficient and um it, like i say it, it Volume wise, it's it's right there with the competition, but you know, it's it's not as much current drop. I think there's also many dealers, and I speak on behalf of you guys, you know, there's a comfort level when you're dealing with a company this size and with the pedigree that Kenwood has, mm -hmm. um, that you know, there's gonna be a support system behind it. Yes. Uh, both on the technical support side, but also on the warranty side. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And and all of this stuff is is plug and play. And it's actually, if you think about motorcycles, they're way less complicated than what everybody's dealing with. Well, I think with that's on a one of the reasons basis. why they're so popular. Right. As yeah. Well. So yeah. I mean, all the bikes are the same. So mm -hmm. you're doing the same thing over and over. You get extremely good at it. And if it's plug and play, I mean, if if you're cutting a wire, you're doing something wrong. So just real quick before I let you go, just lay it out. Mm -hmm. What is the actual offering as far as SKUs or or types of? All models? right. So um, what we're showing here, I mean, we sell them all as individual SKUs, mm -hmm. but we have packages. So is like uh, the HD1F, which would be the front system, so that's your front fairing speakers and an amplifier, and that's typically where a customer is going to start. And that's that system is super important because that's what's what hooks them and gets them into that ecosystem of motorcycle gear, right? Right, exactly. And 
ours starts at like six hundred dollars for that, which is a really really aggressive price point. Uh, and then there is a rear saddlebag system, which is the HD two R okay. for rear, and that's a cut in six by nine with two amplifiers. I mean, with an amplifier, and you can mount up to three of our amplifiers under the front bearing of one of these bikes. Oh, they're really small. I wish you had one. Just to yeah, show the size. unfortunately, well, we'll they're, back. they're we'll nailed to back. our board. I front. hear you. Okay. And then there's another package that's got front and rear, and then a, a fourth package that's that's an ultra kit, which puts those little, I call them child seat speakers. Right, yep, the, absolutely. The backrest and the front speakers. So, so I mean, tons of options for purchasing as far yep. as inventory is concerned for dealers yeah it, and but it's it's meant so it's kind of inventory friendly because you're going to buy the packages exactly. 99 percent of your business is probably going to be the and package. really you should sell them as, as such i mean that's, yeah, that's how yeah. you should be selling yeah them. i think so all right well listen uh what's your impression so far we're here on our final day it's been Man. a great show i mean it really has it and it's been important for us to get this this has been an important show for us because i know we showed the motorcycle line mm -hmm. at knowledge fest but this is where most of our core dealers are is at the show. Interesting. You know, a lot of the Mesa dealers and whatnot. Ah, uh, yes, Mesa's and here. Yep. Pretty much the unanimously, they they agreed that this is a great fit for them, and they're bringing it in. So it's been an awesome well, show. Well, I would say you've done your job if that's the case. I think it, I think we have. Apparently, yeah. does a pretty good job at it. Imagine <laughs> yeah. that, Scott. Thank yeah. you so much for coming thank in, you. man. Yep. Enjoy the rest of your show. Yeah, we're looking forward to uh, talking to you again. All right, thank Take you. Care. All right, ongoing coverage here, right from Master Tech Expo Day Three. I can't believe it's been the final day. Um, this has been an experience. I can't tell you enough how mind blown I have been time and time again, whether I'm talking to, you know, an incredible fabricator or I'm visiting a booth or I'm doing training. Um, and you bump into some crazy people, crazy people like my next guest. Have a seat. Can you believe I've only met this guy in person for like three weeks ago? And this is only the second time we're hanging out, what a... but it feels like we'd be hanging out forever. What's but up, bro? what's going on? Jeff Smith, ladies and gentlemen, representing Amp Global. And yes, we're going to be talking a little bit about some Stinger. We're going to be talking a little bit about some audio control. That's right. And I definitely want to pick his brain on this really cool we'll activity. In here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, that we've been talking about called the Clean Wire Challenge. Jeff, first of all, man, what did I start? Like, you told me about this event, right? Yeah, man. I, I asked you, you were one of the people I reached out to before the show. I said, what, what should I be expecting to experience? It is... You know, uh, you it is, it meant it's definitely one of those situations where for the hands-on crowd, the hands-on part of our industry, there's no, there's nothing better, nothing better. This is hands down the most creative event mm. for those people who creative, yes. are the pioneers, right? You talk about, um, some people like to talk about the top 10%. The creme de la creme, the one percenters, we're all here. Literally everybody is here. here. I, I'm not going to lie. <clears throat> you know, all those names that you see up on the forums and, the sh and you know, those ones that you share and you like on Facebook. Right. Th those guys are like, like, I can't even tell you how many people just walked by in the last 15 minutes. It's, I've been it's, it's legit the Oscars. This is the Oscars. This is it. The best of best. All right. Um, two parts to our conversation today i want to give you an opportunity to talk about what has been the messaging or the hot topics over by the amp global booth today and i want to i want to kind of finish with discussing the turmoil that i've been experiencing judging that clean wire oh. challenge all right so let's start with the business end so what is the messaging over here i see your booth i can actually see your booth from here you've got a jeep yep. in there um obviously you're covering things like audio control stinger but Let's talk about pack first, because integration is always going to be clutch when it comes to getting into a car. Exactly. What do you have? What do you have going on with pack? So with pack, like the last few events, we've really been trying to open dealers' eyes up to our new series of T harnesses. Mm -hmm. So you have the LPH um, Lock Pro harnesses for your low-powered vehicles or non-amplified vehicles, and we have our APH harnesses for our amplified vehicles. And we have a complete family of these harnesses. GM, Chrysler, Ford, Nissan. We just released the three new harnesses for Honda from 06 up to like 21. Woo, that's we just range. released Hyundai Kia. Mm -hmm. Dude, huge selections. Man, Why is Hyundai Kia left up when it's such a popular platform? Dude, it's like this. There are so many pockets of Hyundai Kia enthusiasts and those vehicles are just, they've never not been popular. They just were not in the radar or traditional upgraders right? i mean you want to talk about sold vehicles right like that's a big piece of the pot it's, it is okay and a lot of these smaller markets right if you were to take nissan 
Subaru, Hyundai, Kia, and put these guys together, it equals what a Chevrolet or a Chrysler or a Ford would be exactly. for these other platforms, exactly. right? But you're going to cover a wider variety of vehicles if you focus in on these guys. So, you know, we, we try to work and slowly take care of all the big chunks of the pie because we always come out with products for Ford, Chrysler, and Chevy. Mm -hmm. And now we're starting to look at those smaller pieces of the pie that are going to make the same slice as the big boys, right? So we want to be able to give these guys, you know, the parts they need to be able to integrate into these vehicles. So with those LPH and APH harnesses, dude, it's been a home run. All right. Straight so up I see, run. I see goodies. I'm staring at them. Let's talk about this stuff. What do you got here? Let's do some so, show and tell. So with the, with the LPH harnesses, one of the next ones I said, we just released the mm -hmm. ones for Hyundai and Kia. Mm -hmm. The next big boy is going to be for Tesla. What? Tesla Model 3, Tesla Model oh, Y. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Tesla vehicles. Look at that. Yep. Keep talking. So this is going to be the LPH uh, TSL01. This is going to be for Model 3, Model Y. This is going to be able to plug and play into that vehicle and give you all the speaker harnesses that you're going to need to connect to all the factory speaker locations. Two harnesses at the actual MCU, uh, 16 and a 12 pin, and then the 12 pin that connects in at the factory amplifier. Dude, it's going to make integrating into these Teslas so, so much easier. What does this tell you guys? I mean, put your comments, but like Tesla's taking up some space. When you see brands like Pack putting the R&D engineering, uh, this is like, I mean, look at how much stuff is in here, guys. This is not like a simple two, four wire kit. Yeah. Right. Dude, that's heavy gauge wire. You feel yeah. that. That's, that's Yeah. This, this little package has weight to it and everything is labeled. They see color instructions and all that stuff. Uh, what does this do? I'm just curious. So what the QR code, when, when that's available, that's going to pull up all the instruction manual and all the application guide information. So if someone's not really cool on looking at the printed instructions, you, you put in a package, they can then pull it up on their phone and get everything Sweet. they need right then and there. All right. Yeah, what so else you got here? That's going to be out pretty soon. What What's pretty soon? This guy. This guy. What's yeah, that's going to be out pretty soon. Uh, before the end of the year. Before all right. before summer, maybe. You this know, year. Just, yeah, this year, 100%. So Tesla guys, hit up your pack rep. Let, let me know that you're interested in this right here. All right. The next thing is some real secret sauce. How secret? Like not officially oh, oh, yeah, Not even is. officially out. Like I literally brought one to hand to Mr. Tesla himself, Schaefer. Schaefer? Schaefer's the first person oh, yeah. to get one outside of our building. Do you have it here? I have it here. What is it? It is Can Pro. Okay. Tell them what Can Pro is. All right. TR7 is a device that we have. Can I get can I close so they can see details? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, just checking. TR7 is a device that we have that allows you to have custom triggers and custom timers and things like that. Then we came out with TR12 Pro, which was a secondary device of that that allowed you to connect to a computer to program different voltages, different triggers to give you different outputs. It was things guys used to turn on amps, to turn off lighting, to do all these crazy features. Now can pro is going to allow you to connect into a vehicle's data bus via a oh, t harness oh hold stop hold cutting. up hold up hold up see how tiny this little thing is first of all let me, let me pop it yeah. up real quick oh, you, kind of show all you right i wasn't sure we were allowed to do that so this unit is going to allow you to t harness into vehicles we're first releasing it in three platforms this is an installer tool yes, that, your, your, yes. your customer is never going to care no about no no this. but you this as a dealer you tool, as a dealer right? you as a this. dealer you're going to take this device you're going to be able to adjust from the dip switches or through the micro USB port. Nine output triggers directly connected to the vehicle's data bus. And you'll be able to have illumination triggers, camera triggers, reverse, speed pulse. All right, here. All right there. You know, all this information, you know, amplifier turn on, all these possible triggers. And with the dip switches, you can select which ones you want to use and never cut a wire in the vehicle bin that's the whole thing so like lease, lease vehicles harness. what do you think of lease vehicles yep. lease vehicles too. Mm -hmm. even the higher end vehicles that are probably pro problematic and you're not going to want to slice into those vehicles so we have two uh two harnesses for ford and we have a harness for tesla model 3 model y Amazing. so schaefer dude when i saw this the schaefer man homeboy was just like humping my leg man it was, <laughs> it was awesome i don't want a visual of that i don't want a yeah. visual of that I, I, I don't want to say Matt. You, Matt's super cool guy, dude. You, he lit up. He's super excited. Right, you Tesla back. guys, hit up pack. Let him know. Um, so I'm gonna ask you what, when. Uh, this guy in the next 30 to 60 days. Oh damn, it's here. Yep. It's Put here. in your order. It's here. All right. So, um, let's talk Stinger real quick. All right. Lighting. Stinger. So that was the whole purpose of the Jeep. Mm -hmm. John Lawrence, our our, our uh, senior product manager um, on the Stinger side. He's an accessory guy. He's a Jeep guy. He has knocked it out of the park with this new Stinger Enlightened. 
system. So our new in light in ten. light ten, right? right? Gotcha. So there's a purpose behind the name, right? Okay. So this is the very first lighting accessory brand that connects to our. It's a it's the ecosystem, right? The whole mm -hmm. ecosystem, right? It's going to connect into the high ten head unit. Yes. For control over our LEDs, you can connect to it via a RF remote. I'm wondering if that's the only source unit out there that you can control LED system. The only it is, source right? unit. Only okay. source unit. I was right? just checking. Just right? checking my facts. So it's going to connect into your Heighten. If you have a Heighten in your vehicle, it'll connect via your Bluetooth application. We have a dedicated Stinger and Lighten app available now on Google uh, Play Store and the Apple App Store. So people can download it right now. There it is. So the new LEDs are all dynamic. No more static LEDs. There's too much of this. Is that done? It's done. We're not doing it's that anymore. It's done. It's done. So dynamic, is that in other words saying chasing? Chasing. Motion. Programmable? Programmable. Gotcha. All that information through our app, through the head unit, through the remote control. Do we have the whips? We have the rock light. Our new rock lights, I should have brought one. Our new rock lights are the same size as our other our rock lights, but a little bit taller. They have a five degree pitch to them to pitch out more light, front, back, or side to side. 24 LEDs in each, each pod. Wow. So you actually have dynamic LED motion in the pod itself. You know, itself. I gotta say this, you know, Stinger pretty serious about lighting at this point. And you know Very what? Serious about Just so lighting. you know, like, Justin Cush is putting on a whole lighting thing, right? Lighting is so I've, I've been walking into conversations and over here. Lighting is a big deal right now. Stinger's got some pretty cool product. To go it's on. it's the accessory, man. You remember mm. back in the day when we were doing underbody neon kits and all this other back stuff? in the day. I'm still doing that. Bro. Early early 2000s. OK, fine, fine, fine. fine. Yes, I loved it. When I everything loved it. was fast and furious. Yes, yes. You street know. glow, brother. Street. There you go. You street know. glow. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so all that stuff is back, man. We have underbody LED kits. We have eight piece rock light, four piece rock light, custom reels, do everything. You, we got it covered under Stinger Enlightened. Now. All right. So we covered some pack goodies. We covered some lighting stuff in Stinger. I got two minutes left with you. All right. Bro, I was in turmoil. I could not. I thought I'd just walk do a drive by on those. I'm talking the Clean Wire Challenge, guys. So I believe it was eight competitors. Eight competitors. From all over the country, all even over Canada. The country, yep. Okay. They were given a panel, two pieces of hardware, amp, DSP, amp, amp, whatever combo, wiring, everybody had the same tools. They were given an idea if they want to bring small accessories or whatnot with them. They had, I don't know how much time they had. Anyways, they all had the same amount of time. They had four hours a piece. Four hours a piece to put it together. And then they put up. So the, our job as spectators and participants of the show were to judge and vote on our winner. I thought it was going to do a one-time drive-by and be like, check. Bro. It took time. Bro. Hour and a half. It took time. Hour, and I'm still not sure I did the right choice. Right? Because you had to go back and think about it. Because you look at, okay, so the very first one, it just looked plain. But you walked around back. Exactly. Was I'm not ready for that. back, and it was just like, holy crap. This dude really thought yeah. this out. Right? Yeah. And there's so many different styles. Dude, that's the whole thing about it. If people can realize that even though this was just an example, the amount of respect you gain from your con your customer for your wiring being that neat in a vehicle for a basic amplifier installation, DSP installation, even wiring the distribution box, dude, it shows you the level of class, security, and respect that you put into their vehicle for the wiring. 100% awesome. agree. I want, guys, I encourage you go check out the Master Tech Expo social. They're going to show pictures. Dean and shout out to Dean and Nando did a great job, you know, putting that all together. Props to Stinger for supporting Props to Stinger that. Stinger for supporting. Thank you, Amp, for giving us the ability to uh, send some free products. There you go. There you go. And finally, what do you have in your hand there, Jeff? What is what? What is this? Epicenter Special Edition. Hold up. Give me this. Let me look at this first before. What is this? Epicenter Edition Mexico. See. Si. What is? Okay. Take this, this is in. A special Edition Epicenter. That is geared toward you know our special customer base. What the? We need that, a Canadian one, that bro. That buys more epicenters than anyone else historically, dude. It's it's just a you know a little piece we made to pay homage to you know our customers. It's uh, look at the artwork on that, dude. The LEDs even light up the same color. Stop as the it! Flag. Stop it! I tried to power it up, but I couldn't get the power to work. Oh it, but dude, man, it's it's super cool, super cool. We we have we have so many back orders in the system now. We haven't even released it yet. It. We just put it Craziness. in the system to be ordered. We showed it first at KFES. Dude, I'm telling you. Hey, maybe you're that retailer and you push 250 to 300 pieces of this. Maybe you should call up Amp and they do something special for you. Maybe. Dude, it's, it's, it's maybe. awesome. It's awesome. Bro, yeah. keep it up. Have Not a great a last day show. Thanks, bro. We'll, we'll be seeing Appreciate you. you guys coming to do this event. Oh, man. Of course. Of course. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Smith represent Amp Global. Ha <sighs> <laughs> ha.
All right, let's keep the ball rolling. I got my man waiting for me. Come on in, sir. This guy demands a presence. I need to shift his seat, make sure he's got some space. The big man. He's got a big man. Takes up a lot of space in the room when he's around. We're going to talk some Alpine here with Eric Brooks. Yeah, What's going on, that man? takes up space here is my head. Bro. He's got a big head. That's because there's a lot of brain in it. <laughs> That's all. That's all. What's going on, bro? All right, buddy. Oh, man. It's going good. Thanks for having me up. Of course we're going to have you. What? It's not even a question. Every <laughs> every chance we get. Now, we are hanging out quite a bit this time of year. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. pretty much going to see you everywhere. But yeah. um, let's first get your thoughts on the – like, I'm blown away by the uniqueness of this event. Like, I've been to a lot of events. Yeah. This was really unique, and I want to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, so this was my first time here, our first time here as a mm -hmm. brand. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really cool to see the folks here that are investing into their future and their knowledge and expanding their capabilities – Right, so that was really cool to see. Uh, I got to sit in a couple of the fabrication. You trainings. did, yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, so uh, it was pretty funny. In the first one, Gary Bell was doing a router training. Were you in there for that? No. Okay, so what happened I, I, was I'm very upset that it wasn't. he's doing his his. He, and he asked the question. He said, "Hey, has anyone not used a router before?" Right. So a couple of people raised their hands. Uh -huh. One guy was sitting right behind me. He had a hat and a mullet and a mustache, and so he walks up and. It happened to be Steve Brown in disguise, Are right? So yeah, so it was pretty funny. So they worked it out beforehand. So oh, that's Steve dirty. goes up and then he, you know, he's talking. And then he pulls his hat, Wait, but, and his mustache. But off. Gary didn't know. No, Gary knew. Oh, Gary was yeah. In Gary, it. Okay, Gary okay. was in on it. Okay, so got it. They planned the whole thing out. So they got a laugh. You know, a lot of people know who Steve Brown is. Yeah, Brownie so, man. For yeah. Sure. So if you don't know, he's the one that built our demo vehicles back in the day. We're talking the alien blue ones, guys. Yep. 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 Absolutely. So, uh, so yeah. So that was, that was everybody got a chuckle out of that. But you know. Really cool classes, a lot of things learned by folks. I think we, you know, a lot of people came. Would by you agree that there's the best of the best here for presenting these classes? Yeah, oh, absolutely. There's no doubt about yeah, it. It's no, not even debatable. Yeah, no, there, there, there's a lot of talent here. So, really I, cool to I've, see. I've been sharing with uh, those listening in that, you know, there's been moments during the show where I'd be like sitting down for a second, maybe just checking my Instagram, whatever, and I turn around and like there's four or five. I mean, best of the best, just oh, yeah. standing right there, shooting, you know, oh, yeah. shooting the breeze. Yep. Yep. Shop talking. And that's the kind of environment this is. Like, yeah. we're, you know, where we are right now, we're kind of located, guys, just to give you guys, we're kind of like in front of us is the outdoor pavilion. Yep. To the left of us is kind of the, the stage, the build off stage, as well as the exhibitor booths. And then just to the right of us, is you go down this hall and it's all training rooms. Right. So we're like at the epicenter yeah. crossway and just to see all these faces go by the trainers, the builders, the, 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 the installers. It's awesome. Yeah. Okay. What are you guys showing here for Alpine? What did, like you, I mean, hold on, let's back up. First time you said at Master Tech. So yeah. in your mind, what did you want to bring? What was the plan? So we had a debate and we changed directions a couple of times, but then based on who we anticipated being here of uh, attendee that was here, we decided to bring our F number one status Tesla. Mm -hmm. So we brought that. Uh, and it's been busy doing demos the entire time. Uh, uh, I've been back seven times. I haven't been able to get in yet. But, yeah. So, you know, you know, a lot of good feedback again. Got to explain the system to folks that, you know, don't didn't know the the, the real details of the system. So we and there's to, a lot of detail. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. You, you, like so, you, you're going to if you want to absorb what F number one status oh, is all about, you need to pay attention. You can talk about it for an hour. That's right. You know, but we right. talked about it for five minutes and kind of gave guys a little bit of insight onto what how special this product mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. the, they got to sit in it and hear it and uh you know all the comments coming out was wow this thing sounds great so that's good especially coming from uh this group of folks yeah because you know? this is not the you know i don't want to say deck and four people but you know what i mean yeah, these, yeah. these no, guys no. play they with know, they know what they're doing they know what they're doing they know what so what you know a lot at. of good feedback there we also showed in the booth we had a few displays so we showed our head units we showed um optimate we showed Optimate. Oh. Yep. So we had refresh, Optimate. Refresh them just in case they don't know what Optimate so is. So what we're calling Optimate is our OEM processor, right? So this is an OEM uh, integration device. It has high-level inputs. It has uh, matrix summing inside. You know, you set up your time correction, your crossovers, all that. But then it has an auto EQ function. So you can uh, correct acoustic and phase automatically through this uh, there it is. setup. And it's really cool. It does it in about a minute and a half. Um, it uses guys, just, so you know, I did the demo live. It literally takes a minute and a half. Yeah. And it's, it's really, it's significant, right? So we use some special technology in there. that's Alpine exclusive and, uh, it's a great way to get great sound for anyone in the vehicle. 
Yeah, and let's be clear. This is not just so you're not confused. This is not F number one status. This no, is no, in no. the regular lineup of stuff. Yeah. This is not a crazy price point. No. This is an integration piece, solution piece, small package for small footprint, multi channel yep. integrated it's, it's amplifier. Eight channels of eight channels of amplification mm -hmm. built in, eight channels of pre out. So if you wanted to go to an external like external a mono sub or something, yeah, yep. exactly right. But it has you know subwoofer channels out. It's got one fifty by two or three hundred by two at two ohm. So you can run a full system out of this thing. And, you know, it's, I see it being used mostly with uh, R series or S series products. Yeah, that match well. You know, and, mm -hmm. and that would match up really well with it. But it's going to give you, basically, it's the opportunity for every. It gets you in, man. Yeah, like, every consumer can now have a, a great sounding system that's been tuned to their vehicle. So, you know, that's really where this thing is going to, it's going to shine. And I'm sure the, the feedback, feedback is, has yeah, been, you know, again, world. phenomenal. And again, when you hear auto tuning, you know, you think in this environment, maybe some guys would be like, ah, it's auto tune. But I got to tell you, man, the feedback from the folks I've talked about, they're like, wow, this seems really cool. We demoed it at Knowledge Fest, mm -hmm. and that demo was incredible. Um, you know, just to see how the stage lifts, the detail of the sound comes in. When they the had a secret weapon at that show that I'm disappointed is not here. Yeah, all the, my guy sitting in the back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so basically what he was doing, he was hitting a button on a laptop to turn the thing on. No, off, it was an it was... experience. If you guys get a chance at any show, this one or otherwise, make sure you stop by Alpha and Booth. They really put effort into their presentation so that you yeah. get an experience and that you walk, mm -hmm. you know, you walk away with that booth, scratch your head thinking about stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, that's all it's about. so, yeah, so it, it was, it, I think it's been a good event, you know. So uh, Let's see. It's our final day. What's your next stop? Uh Damn, he's coming to Canada, yeah, folks. Canada. Yes. Yeah, we're going to Absolutely. Canada. So we'll, we'll have basically the same booth setup that we have here nice. at this event. But not that vehicle. Uh, no, we're going to bring our uh, our series uh, Chevy Silverado. There we go, Silverado. And it is, so you it, guys are going to be in TDOT? Yeah, that thing is um, it's pretty no. Yeah. Alpine Brooks. Hey, in the house. The time, thank man. you so much, man. All right. Enjoy the rest of your show. Thanks, bud. That was uh, Eric Brooks, obviously, from Alpine and with a crazy sick uh, Tesla full F number one status in the booth. Here at Master Tech Expo. Let's keep the party going. Excuse me, sir. Would you have time to sit in for an interview? Maybe. Come on in. Come on in. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Fred Lynch from Arc Audio joining us now. Fred, what's going on, brother? How much, Ben? How are you? Man, I am blown away by just so many things that are happening in the show. Every single interview we've we'll been talking about is sharing thoughts. Um, I went into the show with a certain expectation. This is your demo vehicle with a certain expectation. We're going to talk about that. Uh, and has I've been blown away. I just don't know how many more brain I have left of material to have been blown. So you're saying you're mush at this point? I'm mush at this point. <laughs> I'm totally mush. Uh, I've had people back home say, so how is it? How is it? How's everything? I'm like, dude, I can't tell you now. You're going to give me some time to digest so I can kind of spit it back up. So first and foremost, um, let's talk about Arc Audio. Let's talk about your footprint here what was your strategy as far as what you wanted to show and how did you want to connect with the, the type of you know clientele that was going to be here you know this show is great because of the fact that everybody is here because they want to be here this is a you know this is a paid event um this isn't a freebie event so people are investing to be here at this event and uh brian and michelle and the rest of the group they've done an absolute phenomenal job of taking care of every every single person that's here creating that experience and knowledge for us, you know, this is a show where the best of the best come to. No doubt. And, you know, you have to make a statement. You have to make an impression. And you have to, honestly, the biggest thing for us is it's a, not, it's a show of sharing and it's a show of trade. And the reason why that's so important is because of the fact that we're making everybody in the industry better. And as a whole, whether it's us or JL or Audison mm -hmm. or whoever, the idea is, is that we're doing this style of event in order to improve not only our own business, but we're using it to improve the overall impression and position in the overall worldwide market of the car audio industry as a whole. So, of course, you know, we bring our vehicles. Of that course. Two, two, at least the feedback is. We're talking two, about those two vehicles, don't you? Well, I would say two, that, you know, two, two great sounding vehicles that really set a testament to what car audio can be in different avenues. We brought a show vehicle here that literally is one of the most iconic vehicles that was ever built in the custom mm. uh, automotive industry and ironically it's enough it was it was named impression you, well, okay yeah. i yeah. i wanted to get yeah. the, give, give the guys at home a little <laughs> bit of a so right when you walk into the, the uh, exhibit space there is a sick ass yes sick ass show vehicle that I, i've only seen in pictures and never in person um it's according to chip foos yes chip foos <laughs> who is here and i got a selfie with 
uh, and I can arguably say had lunch with because I was sitting at the same yeah. table, so I'm going to yeah. tell people that I had lunch with him. Um, he's saying to rebuild this vehicle, he did an interview with Brian on the stage yesterday, it would cost $8 million. And that's a rough guess, right? That's now. a rough guess. Yeah. So in 2000 and 2005, when it was built at that rate, it was $1.6 uh, $1. million to build. And the only things that were not hand built was the block of the engine, the transmission, the light bulbs, and the wire. Everything else was either handmade by hand or CNC. One off. Even the tires, when it competed, the first round of tires on it was handmade for that event when it went to go build it the is Riddler. perfection yeah you cannot yeah. find a flaw at least at first inspection you know we're not diving under the car or anything like well, that the but thing is it was even going under the car i'm sure it's perfection it's actually better than the top of that's the car. incredible that's yeah. incredible okay yeah. so that's the kind of stuff that's here um i want to dive into arc audio so it do we want to talk, talk about the cars first? Or you want something you want to talk about? Well, here you, you had asked me to bring something. So, so let, let's it. let's do that first, and then okay. I want to end with my feedback for yeah. you about the vehicle. So go yeah. ahead. What do you got? What, do you, what are you showing? What's new? What's hot? So we've been talking about this. Basically, this light, nice little indiscreet black box. Called, that it that. is called the PSM Pro, and the PSM Pro is a new DSP that we're getting ready to release with a, with the all new all in one software suite that we've uh, been discussing. Uh, super compact, it's iData Meister compatible, so it's perfect for uh, everything from small compact locations and exotics to even putting it into the Harley Davidson market. Um, so using iData, you can plug it up to uh, pretty much any of the Harley systems, make the radio think it's going into an amplifier, gives you a full range, non-molested signal, no crossovers, no nothing in it, so you can actually they have a full range signal going into those amplifiers and with iData it's all OEM control through the radios we've also upgraded it from the original PS uh, the original uh, PSM it has a uh, reinforced USB-C connector on it we've got more voltage more channels and it also has a digital uh, digital input on it as well too so if you have a digital over copper style connect, uh, you know, signal you can run DOC into it as well so uh, we're just finishing up the last of the testing on it um, it is a great unit, and uh, the nice part is it's also not an abbreviated DSP either. Uh, it actually has most all the functions of the full-size PS8 Pro as well, too. So it's it small, guys. Look, look at this. Yeah. I can palm that. You don't even see it. Look at that. All right. Yeah. But definitely small enough that you can store in just about any location on top of a radio behind a dash. You could also put it uh, up in the fairing. You could put it up in a fairing uh, in a motorcycle as well, too. Absolutely. So um, sky's the limit, but it's, you know, when they're not looking to take up a lot of real estate or real estate's very prime and valuable, but you need the processing power, OEM integration, aftermarket applications, overall performance, tons of tuning capability, all pass filters for OEM correction as well. It's all in that box little mystery box and i do like the embossed feel of that logo just a little touch i don't know if anybody will ever see it There's lots of little touches i know but it's, i like the touchy feely stuff uh and availability on this uh fred we uh we actually have some in-house and we are getting ready to ship them here very shortly as soon as we get our new firmware and software uh released uh because we will be releasing an all-new software and firmware which uh we are going to sneak peek and showcase up at the CMA event. another boy coming and, up to d look at that uh, i love it and uh we're gonna showcase the new software and a lot of the new bells and whistles and we're finishing up testing on it as we speak there we have it beauty yep. congrats on that i know you've been yep. talking about that for a while yep. but there it is in person yep. everybody sees it it exists guys it exists it's coming your way all right now to the part that i've been wanting to talk to you about so you got two cars here that i'm gonna say are rocking people's worlds i know i'm gonna speak to experience i can i'm just gonna tell you my experience on these two vehicles okay the first vehicle i'm gonna talk about is your car yep we're talking about the flex man how many hours have we spent talking about your vehicle and your setup and the, and the change of yourself with the new amplifiers and, and and then the integration you went from two um you know maestro ars now with three yep okay so we've spent a lot of time finally i had a chance to listen to it guys you know I, it reminded me and i wanted fred to be on air when i said this when you send a vehicle that you forget about thinking about the wires the specs the hardware, the positioning, the gear, all that stuff. And you're just like, wow, I'm listening to something that is triggering emotion, bringing back a memory, raising the hair on your back. I'm going to say that that vehicle absolutely did that. Thank and you. It's, it, it, it is a, an experience. Now, for the record, I'm not going to say you're the only vehicle to do that. But man, did it do it in spades. Thank you. Okay. And 
So congrats for that. And, I, and honestly, I would hope, especially in an event like this, yes, that it is not the only. No, and it's that. and, and yeah. that's the crazy part yeah. that I've been trying to tell these people. Yeah. Like I've been in what I'm gonna say. I I wish I had more time, but it maybe did five or six vehicles so far. Different brands. Yeah. It's funny how the brand thing is less important at this show. Yeah. I feel it's about the fabrication, the level, making sure that everybody sees what's available and the knowledge the knowledge and, and and they leave here inspired and motivated to get up there so it's funny you talk about the different experiences yeah and every vehicle here i mean i've heard from people what they think the top three vehicles are we'll just leave it top three sure vehicles. sure the one common comment that everybody's made that i can appreciate the most is that every vehicle offers its own experience. 100% it does. You can't compare a single one of them to each other because every one of them does its own thing. But the, like for us, when we're trying to teach people about the importance of tuning and system setup mm -hmm. and face the fact what the product can do, the general rule is you have quick tune, which is zero to 80% of the common goal. Sure. You have that 81 to 95%, which is the refinement for the customer. But that last 5%, that is an area that a lot of people forget about because they usually go, oh, my God, this is good enough. But they forget that last 5%. And you said the one key word there. That's emotion. And that last 5% is something that, like with Brian and I, mm -hmm. we both have gone after our own unique patterns. And that's, that's like why a signature. That's like the signature on top, I feel. Because I'm going to be honest with you. And Fred's here. And I'm going to say in front of anybody yeah. who's here, the level of gear that's available in the market today is exceptional. Absolutely. Okay, like let's like talk, when you're talking about the higher end stuff, man, they are amazing product. But the human side, I think, is what's being discussed here more than anything, and that is the the, the craftsmanship, the creativity, the skill level of that technician to put in that final touch. Well, and a perfect example is like when we were up on stage with Chip yesterday. Yes. There was one key factor that every one of us kept talking about, and that is the thing that's great about this industry, that's been great about these builds, more important than anything is the relationships. Absolutely. And the relationships mm -hmm. that we've created are bringing all these people together and bringing all these solutions together to create a better industry for everybody involved. And ultimately, at the end of the day, how do these cars sound? How do you feel when you get into it? And, you know, Brian Mitchell's car. I know we're going to talk uh, about that. And, I'm going to close with that one. And, you know, Brian's car is a sick car. It's a sick car. And I would hope so with the amount of hours that have been put into it. It is a completely different experience. My car, everybody says, is a completely different experience. Andy's car is a completely different experience. Doug's car is a completely different experience. But it's giving people those experiences to show what is possible. And, you know, like in the case of my flux, stock locations. Yeah, that's that's one of the parts that makes me so No impressed. storage space taken in the vehicle. It's still a grocery getter. It's still a grocery getter. 100%. You're driving it up to Toronto, uh, man. Yeah. That's crazy. 100 100% concealed. Yeah. And the whole car can go back to stock for less That's than $200. Unbelievable. What was my goal on that one? I wanted to show people something that was possible with technology so, and being able to not ruin the vehicle. So to finish that. my comment about your vehicle yeah. is the fact that you're not a custom one-way, no U-turn build, no. As, as you said, yeah. which I have to keep in mind. When I'm listening and experiencing it, that, that makes it that impressive. I don't have too much time, but I want to jump on Brian's car. Yeah, so absolutely. I left KFS and everybody's like, yo, you need to listen to Brian's car. You need, everybody told me, Ben, you need to spend some time in Brian's car. What's the first thing I did here when I got here? Where's Brian's car? I looked for the French Bulldogs. I found Brian. I said, Brian, <laughs> get a dog sitter. I need you right now, man. Can you be there for me? Can you show me a car? He said, absolutely. This joint's set up. Yeah. I got in the car. I'm going to say it on the record. I have never heard a car like this in my entire life. There is no car I have ever heard that even comes close to the way this sounds. I'm not going to tell you it's the best because, again, this is a subjective thing. But the experience that that car generates is unlike anything I was ready for or anything I've ever heard. So, And you know what I have to say about that? So you and I talked after Knowledge Fest yes. after you got out of my car. Yes. And you started saying the same thing. I did. About the flex. Yes. And what did I tell you? You've got to hear Brian's I got to hear Brian's because, You were one of the guys. But, and because... Okay. Every vehicle offers its own totally, experience. Totally. And the funny thing is, is I got we got guys for the last two days are sitting there going back and forth. Mm -hmm. They're like, we can't decide which one sounds better. Oh, because, which one they like better. Yeah. Because they both offer their own unique experiences. And Brian's car, from a technicality standpoint, an accuracy standpoint. I, I need I need to preface this. I need to preface this. Brian's a crazy. competitor. He's had thousands of hours of tweaking, playing. Yeah. 
you know, I want to keep this in mind. This is not, I'm not telling you that you could take what Brian's done and sell it. That's not what I'm saying. It, you probably can't. In fact, it's probably- It's unrealistic it's un for most it, customers. It's not, yeah. excuse me, it is not realistic. The amount of effort, secret sauce, whatever you want to call it. It's acoustical pitch. But cost. what I'm saying is it, it's, <laughs> it's inspirational to know that it could be taken to that point. So just so you know, if I get anything out of going to the CMA show and driving it out there, you want to know the biggest reason why we said we will drive that flex out there? Because there's a lot of guys in Canada who we want to be able to share that experience Man, with. And I can't get it. And obviously with Brian's car, we'd love to be able to take that up yeah. there. It's an electric car so it's uh, i'm just gonna know. say the, your car will blow minds there's no question yeah. andy's car is gonna blow minds it just is what it is i think with what overall with what especially with what importel is bringing to that show mm -hmm. i think the impact as far as letting people sit in mm -hmm. i'd love to talk to everybody about product i'd love to give them all the ins and outs mm -hmm. of the product on there i got a feeling i'm not gonna be able to get you're out not of that. Gonna, i'm not never. gonna get out I'm, nobody's you're, you're, you're gonna be eating lunch next to that car. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um but if, if we do anything, we just want to share emotion. We want to share that emotional experience with music and show people what you can do in a realistic application mm -hmm. with realistic gear, plug and play, and be able to let people know with practice and what you can this do. This is achievable. This is achievable. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mr. Lynch, Definitely. thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. you we'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's Fred Lynch from Arc Audio dropping some knowledge. And again, can't be impressed enough about the experience that they bring to the show when it comes to their vehicles. All right, we're going to switch gears because there's a lot more to this show than just car audio. Some important brand new product being dropped in the radar detection category. So my next guest, we're going to get the scoop on what the buzz is all about. Come on in, sir. Have a seat. Ladies and gentlemen, we got Brady Siebert representing Cedar. And more specifically today, we're going to be talking about some escort, aren't we? We are, absolutely. So this show obviously very focused on audio is a big portion of the show but let's not forget custom radar is a huge business and Absolutely. a big part of custom fabrication and installation because what's the point of custom radar if it ain't custom right that's Absolutely. the whole thing that's the whole thing so <laughs> let's let's break this conversation to three things there was a new product dropped i have literally avoided you for three days because i didn't <laughs> want to get the scoop until i got you on so we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about a couple of the key features and benefits of this new product and what this means for you know guys who are into making money installing this right. stuff all right so let's start. what is the big announcement what's the big announcement so the new brand new product obviously we dropped monday is going to be the redline ci mm. uh, 360C. Basically, it is the brand new custom installed radar detector and laser defense system from Escort. Uh, we are excited. This is a culmination of a four-year project to get to where we are uh, as of Monday. Uh, the old product that we had, which was the Max CI 360s, uh, those are completely gone. They're they're obsolete, so they're no longer available. And this was something that has been needed. Uh, we've been out of product for a little while, so. Had to get it going. So, so timing is down. Timing is great. All right. And <laughs> this, show, just so you know, guys, if you if you if you're gonna go Google it, I don't know how much stuff is out there yet because literally, this stuff dropped here at Master. Correct. All right. Correct. So much more info. Obviously, press releases, all that stuff is gonna yeah. be going out. Press releases. There's stuff on the uh, internet uh, as far as our website has all the information on it as oh, well. Oh, there you go. We'll be sending out you know stuff for training as well for the dealers. Perfect. So. so Redline CI 360C, that's the name of the new product. It yep. is top tier custom installed radar detection equipment. It's replacing the pre uh, the, the, the series that was there previous to it. So this is a brand new platform. Let's talk a little bit about technology and why it was important to introduce a new uh, series of, of products. And as you say, it is important. It's important to be state of the art in this product. Uh, so basically we've gone back to the drawing board on all aspects of this product. So we have brand new radar sensors. They are digital platform front and rear. Uh, they're now the same uh, sensor front and rear too to, to simplify your installs and simplify how we you know, manage things in the field. Um, better, uh, basically the radar sensors are 40% smaller than the old one was, uh, but yeah. what? 40% smaller than the old. So you know what the guys always complain <laughs> about, right? You want us to put in this stealth stuff. Yeah. How am I supposed to do this? It's so big. Right. Okay. So we, we made things more powerful in a smaller package. So again, 40% smaller, but it has better sensitivity, uh, better filtering, and now has support for things like MRCD, MRCT oh. uh, technology, uh, as well as even mess diffusion uh, technology that exists in certain areas of the world. So, so let's focus in on one of those items that you just mentioned there. You're talking mm -hmm. about the detectors themselves and in uh, an escort land they are called? 
Uh, you're, you're referring to the shifters. Yes, the, the shifters. shifters. Yes. So these are so the old ones. The other, no, the, the, so that was the radar sensor. So okay. this is the laser sensor. Let's talk about laser. So this is the next section. So this is our uh, old sensor basically here. Why don't you pass that to me while yep. you talk? Absolutely. So the old sensor was a transceiver. Basically did the receive and transmit functions all in one function. Uh, very good product. But what we've done is we've completely re-engineered that into a new product that actually is 50% smaller. Oh my goodness! Look the at this, one. guys. So fifty percent smaller, and is now uh, taking the technology and putting it into what we call a transceiver, like the old ones, as well as a transmit head. So the, the new setup will go uh, from the the old set. It used two sensors in the front. We could manage three. This one is going to be mandatory. Of three sensors in the front. It'll be two transceivers and one uh, high power transmit head as well. So this is basically to jam or uh, shift any of the laser signals and laser guns that are actually shot at it. Uh, fully updatable. Uh, the system is now actually going to uh, include laser gun identification on the system as well what? going forward. Yeah. What's well, going to tell me what kind it's of laser is pointing at me? Exactly what's being pointed at you on the laser. Yes. I'm going to say uh, that's pretty cool. It is. Pretty cool. <laughs> it's an extra bonus. <laughs> yeah. I'm just wondering, like, why, why would I need that info? But I don't care. It's cool. There, there are reasons why you want that info, but it's, it's, you know, we just like to have absolutely, info. Absolutely. Absolutely. Why not? Yeah. All right. Uh, I got to say, this is drastic. Yes. This is not a little bit. Like, yeah. guys, you see and that? In the custom install world, I, again, what we talked about with the radar sensors, smaller is better. We want to be able to incorporate this into more and more cars. And the grills on cars are getting more and more difficult to actually fit these things Correct. in. So absolutely, size size is important, right? Size, so. size absolutely matters. Okay, so we talked about some of the technology. Let's talk about... Um, Updates because okay. this is you know this is technology based. It's going to be software updates, you know. And what what is that experience like when you thought about how you wanted to develop that experience, not only from a dealer perspective but also from the end user? Right. So before we basically always have had to do uh, firmware updates uh, where you have to you know pull in, find the brain underneath the dash, plug in a USB cable into the computer and do the updates for that. Not the easiest thing to do, and we'll still have that option. But the new interface will actually be dual band Wi-Fi updatable. So you can now connect to a home network, an office network, whatever. If you're connected to that Wi-Fi network, uh, it will actually tell you, hey, if there's not a, a firmware update or a database update available, it's going to ask you, hey, do you want to run this update? You can choose to run it at that point in time. Okay. It'll do that all wirelessly now. Well, isn't that nice? So. You know, I think there's going to be two types of customers. There's one customer mm -hmm. that's going to see that notification and they're probably going to say, okay, let's go ahead and do it. Right. Maybe a little tech savvy and, you know, wants to be engaged with his equipment. But I also think there's going to be that customer that's going to see that notification, pick up the phone and give you a call. Right. Absolutely. And that's a great thing. Yeah. Anything to get the uh, customer back in the dealer's uh, shop is always a good thing. There you go. Um, I understand there's also uh, some upgraded options to incorporate even more shifters into your system. Right. Yes. Yeah, so the, the new system, the old system actually had a four-port bridge box, so the new one actually has a six-port bridge box. Oh. So the system is going to ship with five shifters uh, on it, so versus the four that it shipped with before. But you can still add an additional transceiver. Cer certain vehicles are bigger. They need more uh, protection because of the space or the size or style. of Yeah, because there's a difference between, let's say, a Porsche mm -hmm. and a big old Land Rover. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a lot more flexibility, and we can uh, basically uh, – do these shifters in any form or fashion so i mean obviously a three shifter setup in the front is, is kind of your standard mix but if you have a big truck maybe you want to do all six of them on the front you have that option to do that in the system amazing um what did we cover i want to make sure we covered it all for you Bray. so we talked about the new the new lineup the new product some key feature technologies updating uh expansion for uh the sensors well, I guess let's talk about two more things that are left. A, okay. let's talk about distribution. Where do you get this stuff? How is you know how is this being um, dealt with as far as distribution representation so the dealers know? Right. So first off, we have a, a wide um, array of, of direct accounts anywhere in the U.S. So I mean, obviously that, that that's one setup. We also use uh, five distributors currently uh, that are great you know, as far as what they do and, and the services they provide. And we've also added a six here at the show uh, with the MSC America group as well. So mm -hmm. Very, very cool. So MSC will be uh, basically... If you need this product, Redline, mm -hmm. MSC carries it. Okay. MSC does have it. Yeah. Uh, so they're going to have exclusive rights on the CI product okay. uh, up in Canada. Okay. But they also have rights to all of the product in the U.S. as well. Beauty. So the, uh, along with our five existing distributors as well. All right. Readily available. Well, here's my final question for you. 
when do we get this stuff? When do we get it? Yay. Uh, we will be shipping this new product starting next month in, in mid-April. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right. Oh, my goodness. I'm getting a little bit of a nose. Well, oh, I'm yeah, gonna, we're on gonna that take note, care of that. So. We're take care of that. Brady, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate it. Guys, I'll be right back with you. Just getting a napkin. You good? All right, guys, I'm here. Don't worry. Just getting a quick napkin as I line up the next guest. We'll be right back.
Hey guys, welcome back. Took a little pause there, but we've got lots more to go. Uh, in you can kind of say I've saved the best for last. How's that? <laughs> yeah, is that good? Quite nice of you. I don't think it's well. Close I'm going to tell you what. We got a lot to cover on this one. Of course, I'm talking to Mr. Jeff Fay here. Jeff, thank you for coming on today. Of course. Uh, I guess I want to start like half with every guest. Your your impression. We're on the last day of the show here. Your impressions of the show. How has your experience been on behalf of JBL? I think it's been a great show for us. Uh, you know, from from a Harmon perspective, uh, it's been great turnout, great response. The speakers, the the things that we're showing. Uh, we had a training last night. It was really successful. Uh, the demos have just been amazing. We've got uh, a, a brand new Tundra out there with our Arena X uh, flagship 75th mm -hmm. anniversary speakers. Uh, we've got a demo room. That's right, because your cool footprint stuff. is yeah. kind of an inside outside yeah. experience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so uh, this is I'm very excited because this is the first time I've had Harmon on. So I got a lot of questions. I'm going to try right. to streamline this, guys. I'm no going to ask the questions that you guys want. But they've got some gear. I had the time to hook up with Jeff. He spent some time showing me some stuff. There was some pretty impressive stuff. So I, we don't have all the time in the world today, but I wanted to make sure we highlighted at least three or four special items I think that deserve a little yeah, bit sure. of praise. All right. So let's, why don't we start with, um, let's start with the, the JBL side of things. Sure. Okay. So you mentioned earlier, you've got a Tundra outside, but you also have this kind of like a VIP room, right? Yeah. You can't see it, but it's like right there. And, and I've seen him sneaking people into this room all week. Um, what are you showing in there? Let's start with that. Yeah, so in that room, we've got our brand new Arena X uh, three-way active system along with the Arena X 12-inch sub. So this uh, system is based around our uh, neo or our beryllium uh, tweeter with the uh, an acoustic lens. That's actually our sixth generation waveguide um, beryllium one-inch tweeter dome and a humongous uh, neodymium motor slug on the back of that. But you can still tell that it's nice and diminutive relatively small in order to still put it in an A-pillar, uh, put it in a, in a nice door pod and all, all that kind of things. And so, you know, part of what the magic behind this is, this is our 75th anniversary edition uh, flagship speaker. So 70, more than 75 years now, JBL has been bringing audio to the masses. Uh, it started with a gentleman by the name of James B. Lansing, and he put audio in the first ever uh, audio movie which was the jazz singer. Those were JBL speakers. Wow. And so, uh, you know, won an Academy Award for that. So, so you think a, there's a little pedigree there? There's a lot of pedigree there. <laughs> you know, Woodstock, uh, you know, the Wall of Sound for the Grateful Dead. All of that's JBL. Dude, the Orange Square. Oh, oh yeah. Iconic. Right, right. I like mean, everybody the, the badge, knows. Everybody, everybody knows, knows the badge, right? Everybody knows. But, uh, yeah, these flagship speakers are really... Uh, guys, top of the line. We're talking upper echelon. This is, like, the best, like... 20 years of, of, of evolution of this waveguide. This is sixth generation, but a brand new tweeter. This is the same tweeter dome that we use in our Revel uh, $28,000 speakers. These speakers for the car, it's an active three-way. It's the tweeter, the three-inch, and a six-and-a-half-inch mid-bass driver that is just, it'll knock you down, steal your lunch money. Oh. That system is $5,000. Uh, the little brother, the passive version called the Arena, that has a one-inch uh, beryllium dome tweeter. Uh, and then a six, the same six and a half with a passive network. That's twenty five hundred. But a so, two way, two way, two way right. system. All right. So for you top end guys, you, if you're thinking about offering customers a ultimate three way active kind of setup, <coughs> take a look at this here. Now you were talking about some options because you know these guys at Harmon they think about things. So this is the first thing I said. What did I say? Hey, Jeff said that looks awesome, but um, how do I install how do, it? Where do you want me to put this? Where <laughs> yeah, do you exactly. want me to put this? Exactly. So let, let me let me share what Absolutely. we did. Absolutely. So uh, you know, we we kind of thought through the problem. We know that even uh, Brian Schmidt doesn't make a hole saw that's an oval, right? So uh, we we made this cool little ABS uh, mounting plate that mounts right to the back of the speaker. But what's brilliant about it is that it's got brass inserts, so that I can glass right to it. And then I can sand flat, and then my threads are still protected inside the brass. It's not going to stick there that. Or maybe I want to do a flush trim ring. So it comes with the secondary flush ring that's already been um, gapped for your upholstery, uh, upholstery mm. leather, uh, whatnot. So And you can glass right to that, glue your wood sticks, whatever you're going to do to it. Uh, and now you've got something that's really easy to install this. Granted, it's not the easiest install ever, but n no, neither is any high-end tweeter, right? When you're, when you're at this point, you're all, you're not dealing with a tweeter that's anything short of yeah. that depth. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. They're, and and so we wanted to make sure we gave you the tools. So, you know, a lot of times an installer would spend, you know, a couple of hours building the rings, building the tools just in order to get to this point. We said, let's just do it for them. And then, then they're ready to go. But maybe they're not a glue and stick kind of guy, right? Maybe they're welding. So in my uh, Jeep, uh, I, this is a, a flat piece of metal with uh, little nut certs on the back that is designed to uh, Look at that. drop the tweeter right in. So we painted it so that it doesn't uh, rust on you. But the idea is you bend the perforated tabs into place. So, you know, in my Jeep, I tack welded that right to the A pillar right. and then glassed right over it. And there's then, your substructure. And there's your substructure mm -hmm. and you're done. So it's a really simple way to, to deal with a, a, a unique shape of a tweeter, but but the magic is the shape. Well, the right? magic is the shape. The performance is the shape. Can I also say that this is like a signature look? There's a sense of pride. 100%. I mean, this is not something you hide. You want to see it. Sure. So, I would if you I know, everybody, kind of everybody asks, you know, why do you guys have an exclamation point in your logo, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not an exclamation point. That's actually the driver motor structure and the waveguide, right? That's the actual logo. So this is literally the, the V, and what? this is literally the motor structure. Okay. That's the heritage of JBL. Uh, I just got knowledge right there. <laughs> knowledge. Okay, so this is sick. This is top level, um, and this is a three-way. So he said three-way active system available. Also, one level down, two-way passive with passive crossover, also available. Same components, same same materials, same yeah, build. Minus the waveguide, Minus of course, the waveguide on the tweeter. But the tweeter, it also doesn't have the same motor structure because it's it's just a one But also beryllium, also beryllium. Also beryllium. One of my favorite things about the crossover ne network is, A, it's gorgeous. Uh, it's cast, but it's got a glass cover, mm -hmm. which is really gorgeous with no fasteners shown. So mm -hmm. it makes a nice clean install. But then we also uh, use AKG uh, switches on the uh, the crossover board and those switches are bi-ampable, uh, tweeter attenuation, but also crossover change for the oh, tweeter. So like you can go from 4K click, 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 or? To, to switch. So two 4K switch. to two and a half K. Okay. So you can really dial in that tweeter based on your application. Uh, but yeah, that tweeter of course drops into more factory locations. Things fair like enough, that. fair enough. And it, it's a solid brand with a ridiculous history in acoustics. Like, let's just be honest. Thank that you. That's what it is. And, you know, take, use that to your advantage, guys. You know, when you're selling customers that may not be, you know, 20-year-old veterans of the car audio game, there's an advantage to showing them a brand that they may already recognize. Think about that. Yep. Think about that. Well, and, you know, that, that's one of our heritage points now, right? So we're the number one uh, brand in headphones globally, number one brand of portable speakers, number one brand of party boxes. Uh, we're the number one uh, pro audio brand. We're found in more theaters, concerts, uh, houses of worship, pro audio than is, yeah. anything you've ever seen. And, you know, it's a brand that resonates with customers because of our heritage with, you know, uh, Lollapalooza was is all on JBL, um, you know, pretty much uh, the Olympics, uh, you know, all of the different, uh, you name all, it, you, you name, name it, it. That's, there it is. That, it's there. So it's always in front of them and it, it's an easy relation. You know, and I, I, I draw parallels and you'll see where I'm going with this. You know, when I say Sony, I think we are blessed as an industry to be able to offer products within our small little market of car audio from a brand like Sony. For sure. That still cares about car audio. For sure. I feel the same way with Harman. Yeah, you know, Harman is a house of brands and uh, JBL is one of them that uh, obviously is our biggest and our oldest. Um, but we have a house of brands, other brands that we represent in the car world are, of course, Infinity, uh, also Harman Kardon. And uh, but yeah, you know, JBL is so, uh, so uh, near and dear to my heart. I do have to say, being in this industry for almost 30 years, the first pair of speakers I ever sold was a pair of Kappa speakers, oh, uh, Kappa, Infinity yep. Kappa. So, Absolutely. Uh, it's, Absolutely. You know, it's kind of interesting how it comes full circle. All right. We're going to move along. You're talking outside power bars. You guys got some power bars. I hear them thumping. Over there. So <laughs> yes, let's talk about that. We have an awesome new product called the Rally Bar, um, and I it's we make it in three different versions: a short version without lights, short version with lights, and then the one outside that everybody's loving is this XL. And what's so amazing about this is that um, we we've taken a lot of engineering expertise and and have an array of eight inch yes. or sorry eight three inch drivers, two tweeters. And it's an amazing presence, 300 watts. But then the real magic is we have four seven by three inch passive radiators along the bottom of this, this rally bar. And that has more surface area than a single 10 inch sub. The optimized use of space and design on this bar is incredible. I was playing with it and the amount of thump from this skinny little, <laughs> I mean, you know what? I don't need to show you guys power bars look like there's tons of.
power bars up there. I can tell you firsthand, this thing pounds and it's pretty impressive. But definitely, if you get a chance to audition one of these things, I promise you, you will be impressed. Yeah, so we're bringing those into the US in May. Um, but some of the other things I love about it, this really unique mounting structure mm -hmm. so that you can, uh, you know, not every not every ATV or side-by-side -side has parallel bars, right? A lot of times you've got supports that are coming in at different angles. Mm -hmm. And if you just have a rail system, it's really difficult to deal well, with. golf carts is another example. Yeah, golf yep. carts, etc. Mm -hmm. So our rail system allows us to mount from the top from the back also infinitely adjustable in that way but then it's also got a quick disconnect it's high res audio certified it's got an aux in aux out but it's also broadcast bluetooth mode so now i i can party i compare one to my uh, rally bar yep. to my phone and then up to as many as i can get in the neighborhood at the same time sell the really whole broad. crew one. yeah the guarantee yeah. to have fun yeah exactly that's what i say about fun. that um you want to jump? No, you know what? I I skipped something because there's something that was really <laughs> impressive. I want to go back. I'm gonna sorry guys. I want to go back one step before you even talk about this. Yep. There's a subwoofer in the lineup. Oh, oh my god, we didn't talk about the subwoofer. So remember, let's go back. Sorry, let's get you. Let's get you back to this for a second. We need to talk about it. So we talked about three-way active setup. Okay, with the waveguide. One step down, you have a two-way passive. But there's also some bass. Talk about the bass. Yeah, we have a, a, a an Arena X 12-inch sub, and it was designed to go with these speakers. And, you know, one of the pet peeves I've had in this industry since I was competing, geez, back in the late 80s in high school, right? The uh, dating myself. But, uh, um, you know, high-end speaker manufacturers have always done a good job of building great speakers, but oftentimes they would come to market with some sub that was designed to match the system, right? Mm -hmm. But it always turned out that it was really kind of anemic and kind of built for jazz, right? And it turns out I have only met a few people in the entire uh, event that really just love to sit down and listen to jazz bass. I'm gonna right? say it's a minority. <laughs> I don't know. So what we decided to do was really target a bass that, that really is gonna play anything you can dream of and, and give you the amplitude and the growl and the depth that people are expecting from modern bass subs, mm -hmm. right? So it can be put in a relatively small box. It's a huge 12, but massive motor structure. It's 1,000 watt RMS. Wow. Um, but my favorite part about the sub is its growl. And we developed it, I co-developed it with a partner of mine who does our luxury audio stuff, right? So it's based on the same basket design as a $7,000 home JBL sub. But we built this for the car with a bigger, better motor structure, uh, more more aesthetics and those sorts of things. But here's my favorite part. So uh, where, you know, the big guys, the big names that we used to be part of, and frankly, before I came to Harman, we kind of gave up that mantle of badass sub manufacturer. Mm -hmm. um, those subs, whether it's a $1,200 sub, a $1,000 sub, those subs typically have an FS of around 32 to 33 hertz, right? Okay. So you're building building your box with a tuning frequency 33 or higher because you can't go below the FS, otherwise you destroy the sub. Well, the box that we're listening to in that room is actually tuned at 28. Ooh. And better than that, the FS of that sub is 24 hertz. Is that right? 24 hertz. So that thing can get so low and deep. And we did that because it's based, again, off of this luxury thing, but we know it needs to pound, right? And it does. My only, I have a, I have a critique for you. Yep. This is, this is constructive. I own, my only wish, if that space that I listened to that was a little more acoustically ideal. <laughs> because I'll tell you what, this thing sounded amazing, but it was a pretty harsh room. It's a closet. It's a it's closet. It's a square closet. With, with no almost, soft fabric whatsoever in it. It's almost a cube. Yeah. It is about the worst possible environment <laughs> you've ever. And, you know, by the end of the day, I feel it's kind of like waterboarding. I've been yeah. in there all day yeah. doing uh, yeah. uh, demos. But uh, if it can sound good in that room. Magic. Yeah, just exactly. imagine. All right, right, let's get you're holding something here. Let's what's oh, yeah, this yeah. all about. So this is probably one of my favorite products that we've developed over the last uh, three or four years. We developed this. We won two CES Innovation Awards at the... 21 CES. Of course, that was the CES that no one attended, right? Uh, so, you know, sometimes people miss this. Uh, but what this is... Pay attention, guys. What this is, this is, is a cool. really cool little product. Um, so this is a, 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 um, a five and a quarter in long throw, super efficient subwoofer that has two passive radiators on the side that puts out more bass than a sealed 10. Okay? But this box... Weighs nothing. Tiny, like less than eight pounds. And it's active. And it's active. Mm -hmm. And so what this is, is it's a subwoofer for your car. Hold that yeah. Time. It's a subwoofer for your car that is uh, locks into place. It's got high level input, low level input. It's got a base knob that connects to it. There's a little flap on the back that opens up and you plug it all in. And the beauty here is that this is a subwoofer when it's in your car. 
it's got a battery on board. And so then when I undock it, it now becomes a full range Bluetooth speaker with additional drivers in the front. So full range, and now that's pretty sweet, right? But we've taken it a step further. Now we have a home charging kit. So imagine this scenario. I take it out of my F-150 as a subwoofer. It fits underneath the back seat perfectly. Take it into my garage, plug it in. I'm jamming Sirius XM in my garage. It's my boom box. Then I put it back in the truck, go get the boat, take the boat to the lake. Now I take it out from under the seat. I put it under the seat in my boat and now it's a subwoofer in my boat. But better than that, then we get to the sandbar and now we're jamming Hair Nation, right? I take it out of the uh, boat and now it's a full range Bluetooth speaker that's IPX5. But jumbo, but jumbo. Yeah, but IPX5 and it's mm -hmm. on the sandbar with me at the lake. Arguably, so I just learned about this product, guys. I just met Jeff yesterday. He showed me, this is my first time looking at this. This is probably the best Father's Day gift I've ever seen in my life, <laughs> honestly. Uh, it is portable. I don't know what it sounds like yet, but I can, I, I oh. can only base it on my little uh, JBL charge, my little guy. Yeah. Uh, dude, base when you need it, party when you need it, any environment, That's any right. vehicle, battery powered. Home charging. Home charging. Second car kit. And and you can pair two of them together. What? Yep. So last I night, know that. last night during the training, we paired two of them together and had it in the extra base mode, which sucks up a little more of the battery when it's wireless, sure, right? Sure. But oh my gosh, the guys were blown away at. What Did you say it comes with a car from. harness? Yeah, it comes with a car kit and the car, car harness. Is so there's a mounting plate and then a a, a a power power port that goes in the back. That is my uh, tailgate uh, solution. That is my beach solution. That is my. Um, party solution there it is picnic I want wherever to show I you go. real quick and it's called the bass base pro go. base pro go by jbl all right yep. last thing let's talk about if we got to give infinity a little yep. bit before it, I let it go. and i think this is a really cool thing right so a little history about infinity infinity was developed by three nasa uh material science engineers okay they were the guys that invented the nomex uh tiles that went on the, the the NASA, you know, they were part of the team that helped develop okay. that, the tiles on the space shuttle. And so these guys were really uh, materials science engineers, just, but they loved music. They loved hanging out with each other. They loved playing music and having a good time in the mm -hmm, garage, mm -hmm. if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they decided to start an audio company. And some of the technologies that we all take advantage of today that we forget where they came from were invented by these guys. Like what? Oh, polypropylene cones. What? You know, just the speaker cone that's on every a almost... polypropylene cone, yeah. cone was... Invented by Infinity. Okay. How about Class D amplifiers? You ever heard of those? Uh, yeah. Those were invented by Infinity. How about a ribbon tweeter? We don't see those as many today. But at that, home we do. So. At, mm -hmm. at, at home, and those were invented by Infinity. The first servo circuits inside of an amplifier to control a subwoofer and things like that. All infinite infinity uh ample, or Very infinity good. inventions like the history lesson okay so, so what we've done is we came out with a um a kappa perfect that is designed specifically for vehicles but also for harley davidson's and off-road vehicles this is an outdoor speak like outdoor not outdoor elements uh, absolutely yeah. ip uh ip6 from the front and what we did was we wanted to pay homage to the material science so on the cone this is a basalt fiber cone that is uh, super lightweight, super stiff. We're, we believe we're the first to use this technology in the aftermarket. And it's a wonderful uh, sounding material. Uh, it's used in some home audio applications today, ultra high end home. But then the tweeter is also really unique. It's a polyphenylene sulfide dome. So it's a hard dome, but now it's super lightweight, not quite as lightweight as beryllium, but lighter than titanium or silk or other, or other domes, aluminum. And so it gives us an unbelievable uh, sound response, but also uh, it just pays homage to this material science, right? And then you've got a cast a basket, cast ABS with a neodymium slug on the back, because when you put this on a Harley or an Indian or whatever you're doing, you don't want to mess up the geometry or the weight of the, uh, you know, the handling of the bike, right? I, uh, two things. Number one, I can't believe how light these are. Super light. Holy cow. Um, the size, I mean, Hard to show you guys, but like compare that to my head. What size is this? A six and a it's half? a six and a half. Yep. Look at the size of the magnet structure and the way that is streamlined to the back of that basket. And this material was what again? Could you repeat that? Yeah. One? So the cone is made out of the basalt fiber. What is basalt fiber? So it, it a basalt is a material that's um it, it's uh it, it's like a uh, 
It's used in some construction okay. uh, processes today, uh, but it, it's ge been generally used is, as a uh, like a supplement to uh, s some substrates and things like this. Okay. Um, we use a special glue that we audition for the audio uh, characteristics to glue it all together in this uh, carbon kind of fiber woven uh, texture. Then the, the tweeter, again, polyphenylene sulfide, and it's actually a component. So it actually unscrews. And uh, the crossover is, or the, the speaker is bi-ampable, um, and it, it handles a, a lot of power. But the, the, the thing that we really did that's really neat about this is we make it in a six and a half and a six by nine, and we've uh, partnered with Metra. We're doing a collab with those guys at with Saddle, Saddle Tramps. Tramp? Okay. With Saddle Tramps. Okay. And so we have, um, Saddle Tramp DSP, the Saddle Tramp Amp Rack, the Harness, and then our Kappa Perfect amplifiers, our waterproof amplifiers, these speakers, and it's a full Harley kit. Um, and there are three different variants, and then you pick your accessory packs to go on that, whether you're using a twin cooled or non twin cooled, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the eight speaker or the six speaker, etc. And these will be out uh, late, late in the next, very soon this spring, a full kit. Pretty cool. Is that enough, guys? I think that's enough. I think we we, we got to get this guy back on for full sessions where we can dive deep into the entire line, Would both JBL and Finney. But I think yeah. we've accomplished our mission here. Right. A little bit of taste test on what's showing here at Master Tech. We covered the top of the line. I want to remind you guys, take a look at these. This is a heavy tweeter. I just need you to know that this is crazy solid. Available both active and passive, yep. three-way, two-way, passive crossover, along with the 12-inch sub. That thing will knock you down and steal your lunch money. There you go. Steal your lunch money. Um, I'm holding this first. I'm going to talk about this. Infinity Kappa, cool Neo. You know, you even talk about the, the really cool looking carbon fiber weave, you know, cones and stuff like that. But anyhow, motorcycle lineup, uh, outdoor lineup, ready to go, by ampable. Okay. And this puppy right here, man, get you one of these. I'm going to say it again. Best dad gift, Father's Day gift <laughs> I have seen yet. Jeff, thank you so much for coming in, man. Of course. Man. We will ready see you soon enough and we'll, 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 get, we'll go deep and get awesome. everybody the right Sounds information. Great. Talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. So we're going to keep it going. We've saved the best for last. We have two people that we're going to talk to. We're going to start with the first one. Now, you guys know way back, a um, couple months back, when Master Tech Expo was announced, we want to be part of it in a big way. And uh, what we wanted to do was create an opportunity for you guys to have a chance to be a part of Master Tech Expo. Well, guess what? We put on a contest. We partnered up with our good friends, of course, at SiriusXM. But we also talked to Brian over at, obviously, Master Tech Expo, who partook in this, and our good friend Jody Culbertson at Five Axis Innovation. And this young man next to me was the lucky winner. Now, we had two winners. Just so you know, we did do two winners. We had one winner that we drew from the U.S., and we had one winner that we drew from Canada. Langdon was the lucky winner Hi. from Canada, Hi. man. Yeah. Welcome. How you doing, buddy? Awesome. Awesome. So I saved this opportunity to talk to you for the end of the show because I wanted you to take in as much of it as possible. Let's go back to the beginning. How surprised were you when I called you over there? Yo, you're the winner. I was I was surprised. I I only entered it about a week before. If it, last second. Yeah, I like the Imagine. draw last second or like that. And, and, and then I was extremely surprised. Okay, so, so let's yeah. let tell we'll let everybody know where you're from. So where are you from, first of all? Uh, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. So he's a prairie boy yeah, over in Alberta. Yeah. And who do you work for? Uh, uh, for JB's Power Center. Okay, Edmonton, yeah. so JB's obviously a big chain yeah. associated with Dick's performance, of yes, course. Yeah. And what is your job? What is your role? Um, role is everything official job is installation managers. Like everybody else. You, yeah, your yeah, title yeah. is one thing and what you yeah. actually do is another. Yeah. All right. So um, you find out that you win. We do the draw. Were you thinking about coming to the show anyways? Or was it no. beyond your kind of... It, it, was, it, was, it was a little bit beyond. We don't, uh, we don't attend a lot of shows into mm -hmm. the U.S. More for... And this is the show. show. Right. This is the show for techs. Anybody Beautiful. in a shop. Uh, anybody who even works works on the cars into audio, I mean into fabrication, into anything. This lighting, is, this whatever. Is the show. Okay. Lighting, radar, everything. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna dig in a little bit further. Yeah. So here you are. I call you up. I said, okay, Land, we're gonna set you up. So included in this package, guys, he got flown in here from yep. Alberta. Yep. So the flight, we took care of the flight. How was the flight, by the way? Awesome. Okay, Smooth. great. Yeah. We took care of the hotel right here yes. across the street. Not even across the street. It's connected to the building, it's, basically. It's hop and skip boys. At the Delta. Yeah, yeah. How was your room? 
Awesome. Did you, how was, did you have to share with anybody? No, no, I was all on my own, everything like that. So, all by yeah, all yeah, by itself, yeah. room take care. Of. And then I asked you, I need you to do some homework. You need to select your courses. Yes. So how did that go? What did you choose? Well, when went went on to. I mean, actually, like the website here, and um, and then they have it laid out to promote the um, uh, uh, the actual expo has it laid out exactly mm -hmm. that you have to have. Hey, if, if did you, you already kind of have, have an idea which way you want to go right away? Not really. I they they had it laid out and and then explain what course is and mm -hmm. that. So, well, they had about four stages into the course. Mm -hmm. You kind of had to pick if you kind of had to mm -hmm. once 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 all that you picked out your course well you kind of stayed on to mm -hmm. that train so you read what 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 each course is and then i so did you have to give a lot of thought those. to it a little bit i had to think about it. i had to wait out for right. uh, like a day or two right because like you, you know the unfortunate thing you can't do it all you well, know, you well to, you gotta choose. it's it's exactly it so that you want to experience all of it and and learn all of it mm -hmm. but there's only okay it's only hours in the day right so, so, so you made you took your courses now let's fast forward to you show up here in arizona yeah i, I see you at the registration yes, and you're yeah. like oh my god you're here did you freak out when you saw the type of people that were around i i was expecting this it, it was it was it was just all just all of the the Top. the old the, well, they aren't the old guys yeah but the the Top guys yeah. into our industry and everything like that. Yeah. I was, I was expecting all of them. If you look, look, look at all of all, of their field presenters and the courses and and then all of the vehicles outside or like that. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, exper yeah. you, you're expecting like the best of the best. And the, and then you, you know, you do your courses and you realize how much is going on. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. You have your courses. There's, yeah. Then you got the show floor. Yeah. The outside pavilion. Yeah, the outside. Yeah. And that's kind of cool because you get. Did you send any cars? Uh, I haven't. I haven't had a chance. I was today. Today's yeah, your day. Yeah, today, today's your day. Okay. There's a couple, couple of them here. I have to sit in. So. So yeah. I, I'm not going to tell you to tell me all your experiences, but what's your one favorite moment from your experience so far? Oh, geez, it's hard. But just, just seeing the, the, oh, the level of expertise here. Just, just everybody from all the, their builds to how they they. I can speak with their, I mean, everybody of the, the quality of, of, of the workmanship. Mm -hmm. The Is that what you're going to be taking knowledge. home with you? And how, what are you going to do with that information in that? I have to practice. <laughs> so you want to get better? Yeah, oh, it, it's, oh yeah. It, it, every day, day, day in here that you have to get better. Right? Beautiful. That's, that, that's Beautiful. all it is. So, yeah. What message do you have for all the boys at home? The other installers in the snow right now? Uh, I heard it's pretty cold out there. Yeah, it so is. It I don't is. feel bad. I'm sorry but i'm not sorry but <laughs> this is that experience and uh and then i'm going to share 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 it with everybody here i have all kinds of pictures and it'll be everything here so it'll be awesome, awesome uh, to come home with, so. you recommend them to come always oh yeah any 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 sort of training anything but you're able to, to learn from and everything here it's always it's every expo i've ever been every course whether it's a vendor or skills train, yep. training mm -hmm. skills or if that you always you always walk away with extra knowledge and 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 it's awesome like well i'll tell yeah. you what i think we chose the right winner awesome. not that we had anything to do with it, it was a random <laughs> pick but we're happy that we you know the person who won was you that appreciate the experience oh, yeah, i think yeah. you're going to walk away from this with not only a ton of knowledge but maybe some network hopefully made some friends oh, yeah and, and some experience friends. that, that uh, that's going to you know improve your game and maybe you can share that to other people around you. Sure, I will. Yeah. Anybody want to say hi to? Uh, not just everybody at home. I mean, everybody at JBs and I'll be up at the stores and the shops who are we're freezing cold out there. Hey, and then I'll be back with tomorrow. So. Congratulations. Right. Enjoy the rest awesome. of the show, buddy. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, does that was one of the two winners. I'm going to try to get the other one on. I just text, sent him a text message. I seen him here for a minute. Hopefully we can get the other winner on as well. But let me just take a minute to kind of recap, in my words, this show. I know I've told you my excitement of a couple of certain things, but I wanted to express, and this is, this is the 100% truth. If you're serious about car audio, 
custom radar, anything that has to do with fabrication or installation, I cannot fathom you not being at the show because for three main reasons. Number one, the level of expertise and the knowledge that you can attain that these people are willing to share with you. Yes, share with you. You have access to not only their courses, but those conversations that sometimes can make the difference between you know this level and that level. So that's number one. Number two, the execution of the event. The layout, the experiences, the different activities that are going on, your, your course selections, all that type of stuff, second to none. I don't think I can compare this to anything else I've ever participated into myself. <clears throat> and finally, the camaraderie. Um, you know, we don't we don't partake in the biggest industry out there. Um, this is a fantastic opportunity to connect with those that could certainly uh, either use a helping hand, have, use a support. Maybe you're looking for some support. This would be the place to get out there, shake hands, meet people um, from all different you know parts of the trade, uh, so on and so forth. So that's that's really my thing. Uh, am I going to be here next year? You better believe it. And I think you should too. So if, if you can find it within your budget, your time, make this a priority, uh, especially if you're a business owner and you have a tech or a team, um, at the very least, the head technician or, or installer should come by. I know that they may be looking at expanding the offering when it comes to your, the business owners or whatnot, but um, from a fabrication technical uh, technician standpoint, I believe that should be a no brainer. All right. So it's been an incredible three days here covering Master Tech Expo. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you haven't seen our other two days of coverage, make sure you check back uh, either on our platform at cmanetworks.com. Um, we'll have all three days coverage here. We've had some incredible interviews. Big shout out to Brian Schmidt and his family for having us here this weekend. Big shout out to all the uh, trainers and brands that came in and sat with us and uh, you know shared with us what they're showing, what's hot what's going on and uh yeah our next stop toronto cma expo march 24th to 26th so on that note i think we're going to sign out here from mesa arizona this has been an incredible blast i'm ready to finish all the festivities today get on a plane get back up and uh reflect on this experience here at master tech expo thanks for joining us for this special 12 volt insider edition right here on cma networks presented by sirius xm I'm your host, Ben Wu. Till next time, we connect.